Hi guys, so continuing our story from using the Dehancer plugin for colouring film, let's have a look at colour palettes from famous movies and see how they can set the tone of your photo shoot or design when using Affinity Photo. Now this is an Affinity Photo tutorial on the iPad. I've specifically done this on the iPad, although of course you can do it equally well on the desktop, just that the controls are in a slightly different place. That's not a big problem. So how colours set the mood of a film or image is probably something you may not have noticed too much. Colour sets the tone and mood of a film before any of the actors have uttered a word. Directors Lily and Lana Wachowski used a green tint in The Matrix 1999 to create a mood palette that was suggestive of the early monochrome computer monitors. Yellow was used in Kill Bill 2003 to depict Uma Thurman's character's madness and instability. The psychologies of colours is very interesting and it's worth a study if you're doing film on a serious level. Romantic comedies use pastel shades like beige, pink and lilac. Sci-fi and cyborg films use shades of blue, grey and green. Teal and orange seem to be the trend in Hollywood these days, especially in movie adaptions of graphic novels and comic books. Wherever you find your colour palettes, they may give you your colour ideas and you can use for your next book cover, photo shoot or even film. I particularly like the idea for book covers and this is a favourite um, mission with Affinity Photo designers and Affinity Publisher and designer I suppose for that matter too. Have a look at the selection I've already compiled for you to save you some time. Now you'll find these all on the download folder on both the UK and the .com site. rhalmers.com and robertcharmers.uk uh, you know where they are. They're in the download. They're in the um, in the description below this film. So continuing right along, <clears throat> let's have a look at how we transfer those color palettes into Affinity Photo for iPad. Beginning with one you see here, the cars that ate Paris. Now we all know it's easier to create your palettes with the desktop version. However. Until Serif makes palette handling also available in the iPad versions, which they haven't at the moment, then we just have to create our palettes the hard way, one by one. Which if you consider it's going to be available for all projects in Affinity Photo, isn't really such a bad thing. Just make sure you don't delete Affinity Photo to reinstall it from your iPad, because you'll delete all of these as well, which is a real pain. Believe me, I've done it. So let's begin. Load the cinema image you want to use to create your palette. This one, oh, this one I've already done. It's from Blade Runner 1982. So let's load a new image and I'll show you how simple it is to get the palette of colours you need. Now you can see I've got Blade Runner there and on the right hand side there's a palette in the swatches. Already done. That's one I made before, <laughs> to coin a phrase. Load the image Aladdin. This is a cartoon colour palette, so you could widely use this for your own cartoon work. Very basic colours, but it sets the tone and they're widely available and you don't have to think, oh, what colour can I use here? Oh, what colour can I use there? There's your palette right there. Open the Colour Studio and select Swatches. Ignore the swatch that loads. It's left over from previous work. Or it may even be blank if you haven't used swatches before. We're going to create our own swatch just for this palette. So next select the sandwich stack that's up the top there next to the pin from the, and from the drop down menu select add application palette. This creates a palette that's usable in any document you create in Affinity Photo. If you select Add Document Palette, it's only usable in this document, which is fairly limiting, I think. You want to be able to use this carefully created palette in lots of different, lots of different cartoons, shall we say. Now we have a blank palette. 
There you go. Again, select the sandwich stack and this time select Rename Palette. You want to give it a meaningful name. Rename it Aladdin Movie Color and tap OK when ready. There you go. Now instead of the word unnamed there, you have a new blank palette called Aladdin Movie Colors. Let's begin filling it from the image barcodes. Well, let's call them barcodes along the bottom of the, the um, boy-girl picture there. Hold your pen on the color picker. You can see I've got the color picker selected there. Drag the color picker, your pen, down to the first color and then let go by lifting the pen. You got that? You don't click the color picker, then click the color. You click the color picker and drag the dot, that big circle there, drag that down to the first color till it changes to be the same as the first color. Now you'll notice up the top there you've got the blue dot, the color picker and then a white dot over to the left. That white dot will change. Your color picker color now shows the selected picked color. That's in the right. You've got the blue and then the color picker eyedropper. The other thing is still white. And now tap on the picked color next to the eyedropper and it will be selected as the current fill color. That's how you do it. So it's a sequence. Color picker, drag to the color, changes the color of the color picker dot, the smaller of the two dots. Tap on that blue dot and the big white dot on the left or whatever color it happens to be will change to the same as the color picker dot. Ha! Huh. It will be selected as the current fill color. So, still not in the palette? That's our next task. Here we go. The next step. Finally, select the sandwich stacker again, then select Add Current Fill to Palette. Now, see, I've got the image just slightly covering that word, but that's all right. Then select Add Current Fill to Palette. That's the top action there. And hey, presto, there's the current fill in the palette. Same color, same color as the dot, same color as the color picker dot. Now you have your first swatch in the palette. Simple, huh? Repeat for all other colors in the barcode of colors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 colors. You wouldn't think it, but that's all there is there. 10 colors. When adding the color swatches, if you make a mistake and want to remove one, simply long press on that swatch to bring up the little drop down menu. Select delete and do it again. So you can edit it, rename it or delete it. But in this case, you'd, because there's one extra there, I'm just going to delete it. You can see that. Ends in B19, B31. There we go. I've cleaned out the extra color. Of course, I did it twice. Very easy to do. There we go. Your completed palette in list mode. Your completed palette in icon mode. That's easy enough. Just at the end of the words, I'll add in movie colors. You can see either little squares for the icons or the list for the list mode. Whichever, whichever mode blows your hair back, that's the one you'll use. Now you have a very usable palette that's the same as your favorite movie. You can see my funny little cartoon character there. And I've got him on the thing. I've just dragged the pointer across, the bucket fill across to his coat. And it's colored him in, plus his right arm. Now, why is it colored his right arm? Because where his fist is on his hip, there's a little gap there. And the color has bled through there into his arm. So you undo the color, you go back, plug the gap, do the color again. Easy as. And all those colors are there. So you can, you can create your cartoons with colors that specifically suit your style. And if you do lots of them, people begin to recognize your work because of its particular colors. Or better still, give your portraits that extra special look and feel that only movies had by applying a selected wash over the image with some adjustments. This one's using the Blade Runner 1982 color palette. You can see that there. That's a plain image straight out of the stock studio. And I've applied a few of the colors from the palette to it. And you can see how that's enhanced that color.
Otherwise, it's just an almost very pale black and white image. A nice photo, but mm, pretty ordinary. And you'll find it in the SWAT in the um, stock studio. There it is, with a few colours applied. Simple as that. Final verdict, the finished image. And I've adjusted a little bit and put some background behind it to give it a little bit of mm, Blade Runner-ish city look. Probably needs a bit of work, but it's not too bad. You can see the layers, a few colours and the basic image. So, thanks for watching. I hope you've gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Photo and using colour palettes. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And if you like, I would really appreciate it, give it a special like from the options just below in YouTube there.